Half a billion people around the world have a dog or a cat at home. I'm one of them, and this is my dog, Zeus. And anyone who has a pet understands the special bond that we have with them. They're part of the family. But we know that sooner or later we're going to have to say goodbye to them. They don't live as long as we do. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could clone your pet? It was back in 1996 that we learned that scientists in the UK had cloned the first mammal from an adult cell, Dolly the sheep. And people were shocked and stunned. It was like something from a sci-fi film. But in the past 20 years, this technology has moved on so much it's become accessible. Although the costs are high, about $50,000. People can now clone animals from livestock to show horses, race horses, and even cats and dogs. It's now possible from just a small tissue sample to clone a dog like Zeus. Austin, Texas is home to one of America's largest cell storage facilities for pet cloning. It's also the home of a young pet owner whose beloved cat Chai died seven years ago. This is Belle and my name is Kelly and I cloned my cat. A lot of people think that I wanted to bring my cat back from the dead, but that really was not the case at all. I just wanted to carry on a piece of my cat. I am not rich by any means. I'm a broke dog trainer, so um, I took out a loan to clone Belle. Cloned animals are essentially genetic twins to their original. Like human twins, they can look different. It all depends on how they develop in the womb. Even their fur pattern can be different. Their temperament is the exact same, so they're both bold, sassy, bossy, cats with attitude, but their markings are actually different. I really wanted to be careful in the fact that I treated Belle as an individual and not as just a copy of my other cat. Cloning for non-scientific purposes is banned in the UK and in the EU. There have been concerns about the health of cloned animals, but the first essential step of cloning an animal, tissue cultivation and storage, is allowed here. Samples for genetic preservation and cloning are mainly taken in the UK and Europe after the animal has passed away. And the first process we do once the samples arrive with us is we preserve the DNA to store it indefinitely for the owner so that they can bring those skin samples back to life when they want to think about cloning. To clone an animal, um, all we actually need is one of these little piles of skin here. I'll place one of these piles of skin into each of these vials. They contain our special freezing media, which is really key to this process of being able to freeze the samples down to minus 196 and retain the integrity of the DNA to be able to create living cells from them in the future. The second stage um, is the cell culture, and that's where we try and replicate the individual cells that make up the skin sample. So the client has cultured cells ready to move on to the stage of cloning. When the owner is ready to clone, we ship the samples to the USA for them, and that's where the actual cloning takes place. Cloning animals is a multi-million dollar industry and growing, but it's banned in a lot of countries, and cloning today mostly happens in the US, China, and South Korea. The first step of cloning is enucleation. So what you would do is you would take eggs from some females, and you would denucleate the eggs, turn them into a blank egg. The second step in cloning is reconstruction. You would take one cell from the animal you want to clone and insert it right into that blank egg. The third step is fusion and activation. That kind of mimics what a egg and sperm would do, that day zero embryo. Once that's done, the, the eggs get transferred into our surrogates and the surrogate will have the babies naturally. Clones are very similar to the original animal, but there are some uh, epigenetic factors, for example, uh, environment, what they eat, what experiences this new clone is gonna have that could make it a little different than the original. How these technologies can be used for obviously conservation and the way that we can free cells down in order to be able to bring them back to life in 10, 20 or 1000 years time quite often comes back to these very same technology. If you preserve these genetics and you can clone some of these uh, species back, you can actually help a species that could be on the brink of extinction and hopefully stop that particular species from, from disappearing. It's been 28 years since Dolly the sheep was born and animal cloning is still controversial. Even now, the success rate of a cloned embryo is relatively low. 
which raises ethical concerns about the well-being of donors and surrogates, as complications during the cloning process can cause pain and suffering to the animals involved. So would I clone Zeus? I mean, the idea of having to say goodbye to him one day is heartbreaking, but realistically, could there ever be another Zeus?